There we go. All right. Yeah, it's going to be what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cut off this beginning part. So let's see. Because it's a little hazy. All right. It's clearing up. It's clearing up so we can get into the spill. All right. Tonight's stream is going to be about dating advice for entrepreneurs and becoming the man you were meant to be. Now, there's 10 steps to this, so be sure to stay for all 10 steps and be sure to subscribe to Hustlers Kung Fu. If you want to be a hustler, if you want to make some extra money, if you want to develop some generational wealth, then um, you want to join this nation, this movement. All right, subscribe. Links below, plus there's some other stuff that's going down. What we're going to do, because I meant to get into this last night, but it got a little wild in the chat. So tonight, we're going to break down the 10 steps that you can take to become the man that you were meant to be. Number one, you, yes, you must define your manhood. Now, what does that mean? Before some woman or society or someone says, hey, this is what a good man is, you need to create a container and a list of attributes of what a good man is to you. That's what you got to do. So I'll give you an example. One, I'm Glendon Cameron, and what I do is I teach people how to start businesses. That's the short version, but it goes much longer because you got to have an elevator pitch. You have to have something that you can break down and talk to people very quickly. It can't be too long. It has to be on point. So, hey, I'm going to camera and I teach people how to build businesses. And then that opens up the door to conversation. And it's a principle of my life. Now, what I do is just an example. But you have to do the hard work of what your manhood looks like because every man's manhood does not look the same. There are some things that are similar, but in the defining of the manhood, it's personal and it's something that you have to explore. Step number two. Now this is big. This is very, very big. You want to write down a plan for your family before you have one. Let me say that again. You want to write down a plan for your family before you have one. Now, defining your manhood and coming up with a plan does two things. One, it gives you a template to judge women as they come into your life, because this is how the average dude falls into a relationship. Mm, she's cute. That's it. And it needs to be much more than that. It needs to be way more than that. So one of the things that you have with this situation is it gives clarity. So let's say my second life, because I didn't do this the first time because I didn't know. So you get the benefit from my misdeeds and mess ups and all this other stuff. So now if I have a family, I'm going to be present for the children, meaning I'll be home, I'll be more involved, I'll be a caretaker. So any woman that has a problem with that is going to have a problem with me. Let's go with my, well, it's not recent, it's been a few years, my situation with child support. We had a written plan on who was going to do what. Her mother didn't like it. You need to give a check. You need to give her some money. And since they thought that without impurity that they can get money, they took Madison, left the state, and they were just going to hit me over the head with child support, except I fought it for 14 months because, number one, it isn't that I don't want to be a father, but the thing is, I can't be a father with her living in another state, and I refuse to pay ransom to see her once or twice a year. That was the setup, and that was wrong. 
So with this drawn up plan of being present, I know that if there's a skank or a scamp, that she just is going to be someone to have fun with. Number three, write down the description of your wife before you meet her. Because, see, this is what's going to happen. When you define your manhood, you draw up a plan for your family before you have one, and you write down the description of your wife. At first, you're going to write down some glib stuff. You're going to be like, she's going to be hot. She's going to be big booty Betty, all this stuff, right? But as you write and you start to reflect, you're like, I don't know about that. And you're, and you're going to write this stuff like two or three times or four times or five times because the first time is going to be the rough draft. Then you're going to go back and you're going to think about it and like, nah, that's not what I want. Then you're going to write it again. And as you continue to write this down, it gets sharper. It gets clearer. You get clarity. Number four, start a business before you meet her. Now, for some of you guys who are married, you know, it's too late. But for some of you young cats who are not married, you need to start a business before you meet her. So she comes into your life because you're a business owner and you're not someone with a job. Because one of the things that helped me after I got divorced was I'm a business owner. This is what I got going on. This is what I, I'm going to do. This is how it goes down. Right. So even with that, there's some pushback. There are some women who thought that would change, but I never did. I was consistent because once you start that business, then they can't say you sprung this on me because you have to understand that the woman likes security. So you have a job, you have those benefits. When she meets you, she's going to expect that to continue on. And she's not really being unfair about that because, hey, when you met me, you were suited and booted. You were UPS. You were at the government. You had benefits. Now you want to go off and do this entrepreneurial thing. And you don't know what you're doing. You don't even pick up your socks. So start your business before you meet her. Number five, big. I don't care how little money you make. If living on your own means you live in the hood, you live in the hood. A man needs to live on his own for two to five years before he enters into a relationship. And this is why. One, he gets used to being alone. Two, he can navigate the ups and downs of life by himself. Three, he can solve problems. Four, he's proven that he can support himself for two to five years. Therefore, having an extra person is not going to be that big a deal. Number six. You need to save 10,000 cash, not in your 401k, not in your R8, but $10,000 cash money in the bank. Because this is attitude money. $10,000 can help you start businesses. $10,000 can, you can get you a hoopty, 10,000. There's so many things you can do with $10,000. It has to be done. You need to have some money in the bank because this is the thing. If you don't have a job and you got $10,000 in the bank, you got options. If there are so many things that can spawn off from $10,000. And I'll probably do a separate video about that. Um, number seven, as a man, you need to work out. Now, you don't have to be Mr. Olympia. You don't even have to lift heavy weights, but you should be in the gym and you should be working out two to four times a week consistently. Because what that does, and you should do deadlifts and squats. And this is the reason why deadlifts have been scientifically proven as well as squats to raise your testosterone level, which helps make you more manly. Google it, check it out. It's scientifically proven. So you should have a routine of squats and deadlifts. And once again, you do not have to be lifting major weights. You can lift within your own capacity. You can do reps, but you need a good solid routine of lifting weights because it makes you more manly it makes it it's just it gives you a certain kind of look and once again you don't have to be cut you don't have to have a six pack if that's your goal and you want to choose that that's cool but you do need to have yourself in the gym number eight read one to two books per month you need to expand your mind you need to explore concepts because one to two books a month, average person doesn't read one book a year. So you read one book a month, that's 12 in a year. That's a lot of knowledge, really. And it makes you an interesting person. You have things to talk about. 
it's on point. Number nine, nine, you must seek the truth as a man. There are some things that I used to believe in and I was confronted with scientific evidence that I was wrong and I had to go, I'm wrong. This ain't the way it is. So you must seek the truth as a man. Number 10, constant self-improvement. You must consistently strive to be better each day. Now, notice there ain't nothing on here about women. It is all about you and your lonely journey on becoming the man that you were meant to be because you do this stuff, so many things will not befall you. So many things will not happen. So that's the overview. And I'm going to get in the chat room real quick because I wanted to break this down. Good Lord, what are y'all doing? <laughs> oh, man, the chat is always crazy. Black Knight Coden, we in here. First time getting the text for the live stream. Pretty cool. I'm telling you, uh, a lot of people have jacked up emails. Stuff goes to the spam folder. With this new texting message, you're going to be sure to get it. And plus, I'm probably going to drop some super, super specials or some in the text. Um, what's up, M. Magarum? <laughs> Morning Blue. Oh, snap. GG's giving some million dollar game. Uh, if you got a problem with the prepayment links, let Patty know. What's up, E. Sanchez? What's up, C. Squared? What's up, Ganja? <laughs> the boys make it funny. What's up, Honey Bunny? What's up, Refining Chaos? Uh, the Wild Jones Report, Dante Jones, the Bartolette. That's funny. Uh, what's up, Diana? Technic Tone Notification Squad. All right, all right. So the the digital, so the uh, SMM notifications is working. Cool, cool, cool. I'm a woman. What about me, BP? Once again, if you're a woman, you like the content of Hustle Kung Fu. We embrace you and we welcome you. But this channel is designed for men. I am not a woman. I don't know the struggles that a woman goes through. But there are plenty of good female-centric channels to help you out. Tech, how do you deal with a girl that is used to being with you while you're working a job but isn't used to you as an entrepreneur? I got a question for you, Tech. Is she a good woman? And answer that, and then I'll get back to you. Fonte Jones, what's going on? What's up, Lamode? Sheila Cutnew. Hey, Glendon, finally got you live. It's made my night. Talk to me, bro. I need this. <laughs> okay, Sheila. Morning, Blue. I love it already. Great advice for young men. Yeah, I mean, this is not this. This is real stuff. This is this is what I have done. What's up, Roosevelt? Tech turn. I like to see a channel of all entrepreneurs talking specifically on only the assumptions and mistakes they made. Uh what's up, Space Donkey? Uh, morning blue. Oh yeah, I've done that exercise for riding out your wife. Man, after you do that, nine percent of the women are invisible to you. Say it again. Say it again. Big booty Betty. What's up, Michael Watley? Low key call. I thought Valencia was your daughter. That's funny. Oh, uh, let's see. All right. Starting off to hit the gym after my blood test showed me pumping a little bit too much estrogen. As we age, as men, we become women. Our estrogen level rises unless you do something to counteract that. Okay, uh, let's see. Whoa, 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 whoa. It jumped. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. Let me get back to it. Leonardo, I lift a two glass of fine craft beer every night. You're funny, man. 
What's up, Mike C? Yes, you must seek the truth as a man because here's the thing. And let's go to Malcolm X. Malcolm X was one way and he went to Mecca and he saw the truth and he embraced it. That's what you do as a man. Yep, Mike Sick. Mike C, definitely. Call Sneed. You're so right. In business over 15 years, pay all the bill. Wife doesn't have to work, but chooses to go back to work for a company less money. I was paying her and try to compete against me. Ooh, that's interesting. What's up, Anderson Patlin? Sense of reality. What's up, C Squares? A woman is just a perk on your journey. Yes. Logic reigns supreme. It will, Morning Blue. What's up, Honey Bunny? Uh, Charlatan 9. What is your daily, Charlatan 19, what is your daily schedule for personal improvement, reading, watching videos, etc.? It's a little different because I'm a content creator. So my schedule is, I'll, you know what? I'll go back and give you my schedule about 10 years ago. I used to get up and I used to meditate first thing. Then I would write for an hour probably going to start that process again and then i would go to the gym and then i would work on some other stuff so my first two to four hours of the day were on personal development meditation what's up vtu corp tech answer to the question about the girl she's a good woman yes but it's her but it's her on her path. I choose that path. Hmm. What's up, Marquise? Yeah, that last stream got like crazy. Julius Marduk, with this kind of wisdom, a typical guy wouldn't stand a chance of competing against you. Because let's go over the list again. When you define your manhood, it forces you to look at who you are. Because there's some parallels that all men are going to take. But there's certain things like I'm a content creator. I'm a writer. I, I create stuff. So that's a different thing. You might have this other guy over here who's a builder. He builds houses with his hands. There are so many things. And, you know, there's kinetic learning. There's auditory learning. So you got to do the exploration in who you are and draw up a plan for your family before you have one. And many guys who do this, they like they don't want a family. And that's cool because they know that and they know what women to avoid. Since really hard for many boys these days to become men. Yes and no. If they have the right information, they can get past this, but there's a lot of the wrong information out there. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Uh, it jumped again. I love watching stuff. Glad to finally get your live program working. Cool deal. Welcome, Michael Sonarski. Anderson Padlin, your channel's awesome. Thank you. Uh, Levinsky Page, you're doing two days on the videos. Doing a little test. We'll see. Because essentially, the success of dating, you know, dating advice for entrepreneurs is clearly a thing. So I'm going to do a playlist. This is just the second of many more to come. Because I'm going to break down all these topics. Sometimes you have to make a choice. My wife, my wife gave me an ultimatum. Business and marriage. I said, once you stepped out on me, keep stepping. Whoa, dank souls. Good Lord. What's up, Spanky? Space Donkey, Benny. John Lyle. Hey, Glennon, thanks for doing this live. On rule number three, write down the description of your life. How does this? No. Write down the description of your wife, what she looks like. Because, see, this is how it's going to go. First, you're going to write down all the physical attributes. And then when you go back, you're going to be like, hmm. That's nice, but then you're going to get into, is she warm? Is she compassionate? Is she a good person? That stuff will come later. For some guys, it may come in the first pass. It just depends on what you want. Um, so that's write down your wife, not your life. Number one, define your manhood, things that you should be doing. That's going to be there. That's not number three. Correct. As soon as why we're all here, it would be in our DNA to do better. T 
technique. Can you speak more on the meditation specifics? Okay, uh, years ago, I was introduced to transcendental meditation. Google it. That's one of the things that I used to do. You can either, if you're really smart, you can figure it out on your own, or you may need to have someone show you. Since reality, I believe a man shouldn't even think about getting a woman until they're 30. I kind of agree with that, and I kind of don't, because there are some men who know who they are, who have a good sense of purpose at 22, 23, and can pick a one woman, marry her, and be happy with that. That's not most dudes. So I'm going to say 80, 20, 80, 30 on that one. But I, I feel you. Uh, let's see. It jumped again. Hold on. Let me come back. Uh, Lauren Allen. My boyfriend is constantly working on his career. And so am I. We support each other to our reach our personal and relationship goals. You get to clap. You go, girl. Uh, young Brandon. How long should I meditate between? Thir no. Meditation it has been scientifically proven that meditating as little as five minutes a day will give you benefits. I used to do tw 10 to 20 minutes. Ask Chris Trace. Don't even get into finish watching the prior video. I was on my way home from networking event. <laughs> uh, Pharaoh Phoenix, what do you define as a good woman? How can you tell if they're pretending to be one just to ride your coattail to the top? Okay, here's something that many of you don't understand and comprehend everybody is scared and there is the chick you meet up front and then there are situations where slowly or fastly she becomes she you find out who she is so it is in a woman's nature to marry up which is a man with money a man who has things going it is in her nature this is it's dna based so a woman wanting to be with a man of means is not gold digging. A woman being, wanting to be with a man of means that she does not care about is gold digging. So if she cares about you and she loves you, it's not gold digging because that's the what that's what they were designed for. The, I mean, look at the evidence of Vander Holyfield, of Mike Tyson. If a man has means, many women will marry this dude and some of the stuff I got when I was doing the relationship book, this woman after woman told me when I married my husband, I did not love him, but later it came and that blew me away. Uh, what's up? Ask Chris trades. Martin, if you see a future wife, you should at least introduce yourself, put yourself in the picture or stack the cash, get strong. Okay. Uh, Martin, I got a whole different ball game on that. When you develop your manhood, your manhood, you don't have to worry about missing her or introducing yourself to her because as you level up and as you develop yourself, you will attract her. So if you're attracting trash right now, that's because your spirit is trash. I mean, that's the reality. So you don't even have to worry about that. Your job is doing what you need to do to be a better man. Morning. The plan stage is awesome because if you prepare for a job, why not prepare for a good spouse and parents? Society says be yourself. When you try it with your boss, you get fired. Morning Blue, you said something there. You said something there because one of the things is just be yourself, right? Being yourself is being nasty. Being yourself is being funky. Being yourself is farting in church. Being yourself. We can't be ourselves and associate with other human beings. I think the thing that gets misconstrued is you should work on being presentable and being yourself is your higher self, not your basic self. We got a lot of people being their base self, but being your higher self is going to take you to levels and situations and opportunities that you will just blow your mind. I have to, I'll tell you a little story here in a minute. I'm, Cause I think I'm down here to most of these comments. Uh, having witness. Uh, no deal. Pilkwood doesn't. 
Benny, my last girlfriend was Tyler, and I lived with her in Bangkok. She just wanted money from me, and we got into fights. <clears throat> oh, man. Leon Holt, being a straight male with no children is seen as a threat to all. Not really. One of the things that you have to understand, there is the news cycle online, and there's real life. After Trump was elected president, a Jewish girl, young girl, held the door open for me at a bakery the next day. Trust me, the news cycle's hyped up. It's not like that. Since the reality, I think it's important to know that being a man during the booming years of post-945 is different from today. Very much so. Today, you have to own your own business to live the American dream to the fullest. I agree 100%. What's up, Erica No Cole? Uh, let's see. Hold on. If a woman really wanted a man of means, she have no problem with her man becoming a man of means. Not exactly. Remember, women like security. So if she comes to you at your level where you're secure, she does not want you to change that. Even though if you take risk to get more, she ain't feeling that. Honey Bunny, thank you for the gold digger clarification. I've been telling people for years. Morning. Chemistry is for girls. Real relationships are often friendships first. True. Raquel, attracting trash because you're... It, it is. <laughs> Every man should weigh the, read the way of the superior man by David Dita. Be your most involved self. I agree with that. BP, I love my husband. I'm down with him through thick and thin. That's what marriage is about. It's not about good times. It's about staying together through the hard times. That's true. Mr. Clyde, love these talks. Good deal. <laughs> the hardest thing for me here is to sit here and listen when I express it my opinion, but tonight I listen. Okay. All right. So here's the story of becoming your higher man and what your purpose will lead you to. You know the story, but I'm going to go a little deeper. I tried to write for three times, right? And it didn't work out. Now, the third time I had, I was evolved. One, I had discipline. Two, I had goals. Three, I knew how the world really worked. The first two times, I didn't know that. And that's why I think it was successful. But when I became me and when I did what I was supposed to, doors just opened up all over the place because I wrote my first book. My partner was proud of me. I even got a message from my grandmother who's dead. Another story. And as I dug deeper into being a creator, being educating people, my life got better in all aspects. And it was funny because I wasn't making any money, but my life got better. And I realized something. I was meant to do this. And once I stepped into my purpose, everything just changed. I mean, it, it was crazy. Like when my partner, she had cancer and I was able to be there for her. And there was all kinds of situations where I was able to help people. I was able to bless folks. I was able to take care of my daughter. I was able to do so many things because I was doing the right thing for me as a man. Uh, let's see. What's goody? Would you suggest hustle camps for me? No skills, no savings? Yes. Meek alone. Man, if I came across this info early in life, I wouldn't have got married when I did. Same thing, man. Don't feel don't feel alone, bruh. Don't feel alone. Uh, can you you please explain what you mean by supreme hustling? Hustlers are not taking this course, but if they did, they would 20 times more money. All right. Um, there are supreme hustlers who they're making between $10,000, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month net. So they don't really see the need for learning how to sell stuff or learning how to market because they're good. And I'll give you a good example of this. Uh, today, I went ahead and got some insurance for this place because I got all these expensive ass computers in here. I was like, look, you needed some insurance. So as I was going through the application process, the insurance lady asked me what was my payroll and i told her and she was like wow that's really large and you know the payroll is like twenty thousand dollars a month overheads 25 right I, i'm thinking you know i've been there before so i don't think it's that much and then we got into a deeper conversation 
And she said, most of the people, and I said, what do you mean most? She said 90%. They, it's them and one employee or one or two. She's like, you have one of the highest payrolls I've ever seen. So once again, most people are poor. Most businesses are single member LLCs because most folks don't know how to build. So you got a supreme hustler who has gift of gab, natural salesmanship, charisma, but they don't know how to build because that's another skill set. So if a supreme hustler, a matter of fact, the supreme hustler did take the first 30 days to 2,500 and he went from 30,000 to 100,000 a month. Because one of the things that I teach is how to build systems and how to build organizations. Okay, there's five employees at Hustlers Kung Fu. Well, Mac Daddy Media. That's, I mean, because the thing is, for you to make, and my goal is a million dollars a month. That's my goal. I'm probably going to need three to four more employees full time. Because you need capacity in advance of the development of the business. So you got to hire people, train them. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. <laughs> Sense of reality. People need to understand that women haven't really changed much towards getting a partner by means. Back in the day, it was having a job. Today, it's about having capital. Evolution, man, it hasn't changed. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Um, I re I'm a different kind of reader. I used to read about a book a week. So Michael Sinarski, nice guys finish last is a myth. Most guys that say this go after girls. They have nothing in common with should they go by common interests instead of desires. I can agree with that. Yep. I I'll tell that story because stories are back. If you want this story, I'll, I'll tell that because it, it was pretty freaky. Um, honey bunny as a woman when I date a man or a potential spouse I really just want him to not pull my life down unstable people tend to pull everything around them down to their level let me tell you why you feel that way and it's a primal emotion back in them day millions of years ago when someone new came to the village and they were needy they would kill this person or stone them because needy people meant they were going to consume more resources than they were going to provide and that is in all of us. Like if someone's like the story the other night with that chick, whenever I acted needy, she was like, mm -mm. and when I was like, I don't need you. <sighs> come here, man. Come here. Oh, you know, so it's a primal primary, uh, primal imperative that many people don't understand because once you understand it, you don't get mad at women for certain things that they do because it's in their DNA. It really is. If you read the book, The Illusion of Entrepreneurship, you, you'll understand why women start businesses. It's really, really that deep. Uh, let's see. Morning Blue, picking up a woman is different than living with a woman. Picking up is a skill, living well is a character. Let's give let's give morning blue the slow clap to, because that's true. One of the reasons I live with someone is I saw this thing that happened to a lot of my friends who lived alone. They became intolerable and inhospitable to living with someone else. The longer that you live alone, once you cross a certain age, the more likely you will continue to live alone because you don't know how to live with anybody. Living with someone is totally different than picking up someone totally different than banging someone there is an ebb and flow to it there so once again slow clap the morning blue what's up miss monique online shopping from afes will open anybody that served and got honorable discharge go to army times for a sign up link hmm that's cool thanks for the uh share dank souls miss monique you can't date and build a uh, you can't. If you have the right partner, you can't. That is a myth. Because if you got the right partner, then they're not going to get in your way. They're going to support you. But you got the wrong partner? Yes, that's very true. Uh, Leonardo, Leonardo Sorrento. Gary V is real and Grant Cardone's real. I mean, they're both arrogant, but they're real. 
That Mr. Pre story. Mr. Pre. Yeah, that was wow. Anderson Patlin. I want you to think about this. Anderson Patlin. Porn stars have no problems getting married, but good girls who don't sleep around but have bad attitudes do. Just saying. Uh, BP, I started traveling nursing agencies at hospitals. So I try to get a contract. We used to larger companies. I was placed on one list and they don't need help. I'm trying to figure out what to do. You need to learn how to cold call and market. Uh, Lauren Aaron, I'm writing scripts, but they get stuck. I'm refining my hustle. How do you refine your writing? Write more. Write every day. Take every opportunity to create. Uh... Uh, let's see. If we're to create a business, we must embrace the pain. Billion dollar Chernobyl yogurt seat money came in from his doctor wife who later, who later fought him in a bit of divorce. She owned that company. Thanks. I just watched your Cur your video about Curtis Mayfield. Real G shit. Gucci Mane mixtape. All right. All right. Carl Sniss. Even the female honeybees kick out the male bees from the hives during the winter because they aren't working, just eating up all the honey. Damn, I didn't know that. John for Russell, great content as usual. My dad wasn't around and, and women ran him and he's broke at 77. My friend's dad was a man and he was very successful and retired and still making 40K a month. Damn. What if you, what if you got a good woman but still desire to meet other women? Darren Lee, you need to be honest with that woman. She may go with it. She may disappear, but be honest with her. Dill Pickle. Hell yeah, I just got my own place and two things I'll never do again. Go broke and live with somebody again. <laughs> Since reality, dating advice for entrepreneurs. Have standards on your partner who will help you enhance your entrepreneurship skills and business. True. The College Picker. Holy smoke, smashing the like button just because audio quality is top notch. Spit it, Glenn. <laughs> What's up, dude? Gee, you took the power out of the pumpkin without needing it. You're funny. Uh, what are the traits of the wrong partner? Anything that goes against what you're trying to achieve. It doesn't necessarily have to be evil. It just has to be wrong. Miss Monique, nine days. So many men don't get that woman building something is focused differently. I can't shift my priorities just for love. Love doesn't pay the bills. Glad stories are back. Uh, what are the traits of the right partner? Once again, when you go to defining your manhood, that's when that comes in. Let's let's just go ahead and give a few examples. Let's say there's this dude named Larry, right? And Larry is very content eating out. Larry's very content with not really picking up around the house. And Larry likes a, a big booty, small breasts, and red hair. If Larry gets that, Larry's going to be tickled pink. He's going to be happy because she doesn't have to clean. She doesn't have to cook. As long as she has that red hair, that big booty, and she treats him nice, he's going to be happy. Let's go to Carl. Carl is a neat freak. And Carl would be totally at odds with this chick with the red hair and the big booty because she's sloppy. She doesn't cook. So it wouldn't work for him. You got to do the exploration into your manhood of what you want because Define your manhood, and that opens up the doors to everything else. Because if you skip define manhood, then you drew up a plan for your family before you have one. Okay, so you know what kind of family you want, but how are you going to support them? What what kind of man gonna you going to teach your son to be? What kind of man you going to show your daughter? You know, you can't. And this is going to be hard too, because a lot of social engineering will have you thinking that if you are uncomfortable with homosexuals and trans uh, transgender that you're homophobic when no you just don't want to be around those people and I know I'm going to really get a lot of crap for that but that is one of the things I'll tell you a little story I was going I was coming from DSW and there was this wonderful lovely piece of woman that's walking she had a dress she had the heels she had that nice thing and I'm just all caught up in her walk and this big greasy homosexual going to say flirt you going to look at her ass and ignore mine? Yeah. Now, 
it's going to become, and this is another reason you have to define your manhood and have to build your own power base. It's going to become crazy that if you rebuff a gay dude for hitting on you, people are going to look at you like you're crazy. That's coming. And that's problematic for someone who's defined their manhood. That's problematic for someone who's a traditional rough and rugged male. That's a problem. So, uh, let's see, let's see. What if you with someone that wants a baby, have your baby, want, wants to sleep around? I, I don't know about that one, man. That sounds crazy. Uh, Joshua Hill, can these concepts also work and apply the same gender couples? Yes. Ask Chris Trace. No, I don't do strip clubs. It's not a proper allocation of resources. College picker. I love your stories. What's up? <laughs> That's funny. BP. Uh, Emperor Bay, should you have your partner involved in your business or not? There's two paths to this. If your partner has no skills, can't contribute to the business, hell no, she does not belong in your business, nor does he belong in your business. But if your partner brings some to the table in the beginning, because you don't establish a business and then put your wife in a senior position or your husband in a senior position and they don't have no skills, that's just going to mess up your company. So that's how I answer that. Uh, reality. Uh, I believe entrepreneurs should date and marry someone on their level. You can't be making over six figures a month and date penniless Priscilla who has no wealth building skills and is nice. Uh, I'm going to disagree with that because Bill Gates married someone like that. Steve Jobs married someone like that. Jeff Bezos married someone like that. Yeah, uh, I'm going to disagree with that one. Dill Pickle, you're funny. Give me Larry. Uh, let's see. All right, hold on, hold on. The cosh picker. I'm flattered when dudes hit on me, but I know what they want and they can't have it. You're funny. Mika Long, would that be a defending a, my, a manhood course? Uh, probably, I don't know. I don't know. I, I should say probably not, but who knows? Dennis, what's up, financial warrior? I'm cool on transgenders acting like women. Uh, it's really interesting because I used to work with a transgender person. I used to ask a lot of questions. It was really interesting. <laughs> I can see in there a transgender person. Because, I mean, one of the things is a lot of them act out. You know, if you're transgender, you're doing your thing, cool. But... Pretty much leave me out of it. Miss Monique, I don't want to be single, but where does a businesswoman find a businessman? Miss Monique, this is how you find a businessman. You do what you're supposed to do, and he's going to drop into line with what you're doing. How would you handle being sued? I don't know. I'm not going to have that problem. It already is in some places. Damn. Now, Erica Nicole, I just kept it moving. Every time I go, <laughs> dang souls, every time I go out with a woman, all I can think about is my appointments for the next day or what I can do to max that dollar. Hey, she's got to understand that's where your mindset is. Young Brandon, I have a woman that I work with. We flirt, but we couldn't take it further because I wasn't doing anything bad with money full of self-doubt. Yeah, you're going to have to uh, define your manhood on that one. Uh, let's see. You can, Learno. You really can. Ask Chris Trace, do you see a lot of these millennial females living home with their parents but want the whole world and want to act like they're not struggling? Uh, actually, I had, well, that's a whole different thing. That's a whole different video dealing with the millennials. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, 
A man must always seek the truth. Rule number nine. Truth is a man ain't a woman, period. What's up, Shalise? Uh, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Mark Zuckerberg wives did have wealth building skills, though. Ah, uh -uh. no, they didn't. They were regular women. See, this is the thing. If you are, let's say you are Jeff Bezos. As he grew, his wife grew. And part of that is because they were very compatible to begin with. Because let's say you could take a penniless Priscilla and then she gets with um, this millionaire. If she is open to being trained, he can teach her how to handle money. He can teach her how to build wealth. Prime example, um, chick that was married to Babyface. Carrie something, whatever. She's got a production studio now. She crazy as hell, but she got a production studio now. She makes movies. So she got up there at that high level and created her own thing. So it, you know, she was penniless Priscilla. She was a video hoe. That's how they got, that's how they met. I know their story very well because a lot of stuff was popping down here in Atlanta in, 80, in the 80s. Uh, Richard Poe, what are your thoughts on the older man and 47 younger women relationships? Lately, I've been dating women significantly younger. Welcome to the club. All right. I'm a YouTuber, right? I'll be 51 very soon, like three, four days, right? And women my age are on the... They're trying to slow down, whereas I'm still trying to go up. I'm still busting. I'm still grinding. So immediately we have an incompatibility. They're not wrong for one to slow down. That's where they are in their life. It just doesn't work for me. I wear Batman shirts. I come to work with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck on. And they're like, he's so immature. And that's their thought process. So I, typically I have not dated anyone close to my age in 12, 15 years. Uh, there's usually a 15 to 20 year age gap. So that's my thought. Uh, I dig your honesty, GM reprogramming my mind as to speak. It helps to hear your thoughts and ideas of what the four of what's going on before he wants. So, yeah, I mean, essentially, you know, once again, we're going to go through the top 10. Define your manhood. It's very important. Draw up a plan for your family before you have one. What's, um, write down a description of your wife. Very important. Start a business before you meet her. Live on your own. Save 10000 Work out, lift weights. You don't have to be he-man or nothing, but you, you got to get in there. Read at least one or two books a month. Seek truth and seek constant self-improvement because... In this thing that's called life, we're going to grow, right? And if, you know, if you're a couple and like one person's growing and another person's just stuck, it's not going to work. And it's not like someone's bad or someone did something. It's just the incompatibility is just going to be reach a point where it's just going to be too hard for them to stay together. Uh, I like to see a millionaire Mitch turn penniless Priscilla into paid Priscilla. I don't see it happening. Well, OK, one of the things that you got to understand. There are a lot of people in this country who are doing these things and they're not on Facebook. They're not on YouTube. That's one of the things I think people forget. There's a lot of paid people out here who have who, who want nothing to do with YouTube. They're not going to put their lives on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. They're just not. Uh, Miss Monique, let's be real. Men have the upper hand. There's a lot more single eligible single women. They're looking the pool of men on that level and demand and in limited supply. I want you to think about this, Miss Monique. And I really want you to be honest. Are you the best woman that you can be for yourself at this moment? C squares ex wife was 12 years younger. Tracy Edmonds, Kimora Simmons definitely were trained in their current lifestyle. Thank you, Joshua Hill. Yeah. I wear Winnie the Pooh boxers and I Eeyore. <laughs> if you can't bench press me, we got problems. Le Levish cheek poutique. I think it works. My husband's 55. I'm 37. True sense of reality. I mean, that that's just one of the things that you have to look into because 
once you go through this process, essentially, like number one, and number one is going to be very, very hard because you've been told by society what kind of man you should be. You've been told by women what kind of man you should be, but you've never actually sat down and thought about what kind of man could I be? It's going to be a trip once you start writing and it's like, whoa, wait a minute. This is kind of crazy. Uh, let's see. All right, where are we with this? Okay, cool. All right, so this is, we're gonna have some more of these chats. Uh, I don't know what the next one's gonna be because I have to organize it in my mind because I did this for myself, but I never really thought about putting it down. So there will be another one. This is gonna be a playlist. So it'll probably be three to five videos because or more I, you know as we as i dig into this because um i think this needs to be said and by the number of people watching this <laughs> oh my and also i'm gonna be more on point and keep the stuff more congruent because like the first one just got completely out of hand so for those of you who are still here it's story time and let's see which one am i going to tell I'm going to tell the crazy J story. There was this chick, right? She lived up in Cobb County. My partner called her Miss Classy. And we'll tell you why she called her Miss Classy. This was a long time ago because we met on plentyoffish.com. So I was supposed to go see another chick who was a nurse who worked at South Fulton Hospital, but she reneged on me. So I defaulted to this position and I said something about you're my favorite. That's a joke, right? So we meet up and she's pretty smooth. She's about five, two, pretty, pretty like hazel, hazel green eyes, nice little bob. She had on these high heel boots and stuff. And we go to Jason's deli. We have a nice little chit chat. And then, you know, because we parked my car by the pumps at Cumberland Mall, then we take her car. She had a little BMW and we go up there and then on the way back, we sit in the car and then for some reason she takes off her shoe and she has like really pretty feet. And I have a foot fetish. I just do. And I was like, oh, that's nice. And immediately Thor Arr! rose to the occasion and I put her hand on Thor and I was like, I think we should do something tonight. I I, I, I want to do something to you tonight. And she was like, I don't know. But she didn't move her hand. So I get in my car and I said, I'll follow you home. And you're like, you got condoms? I was like, no, but we can I can stop at Walmart and get some. So I follow her. And we're pulling, there's a Walmart close to her house. Pulling Walmart. And I said, like, she might be gone. I don't know. But anyway, it was still fun. Come out. She's still there. Smoke coming out the tail of her pipe. So I follow her home, park in the garage, and we go upstairs and we just smash like three times. And then woke up, it was cool, it was, it was fun. She's like, I have no gear, I feel pretty good. I'm like, I feel good too. So I thought she was cool. So we go ahead and proceed to hang out. And then I see the other side of her. She just kind of flipped out on me, just like, I mean, crazy. Because my partner heard her on the phone because she was like screaming, right? And I was like, what is this chick's problem? And then my partner was like, so she was like, well, I ain't that kind of girl. And then my partner's like, so you, she sleeps with you the first night, Miss Classy, but she ain't that type of girl. Get out of here, right? So we go on and I realized that this chick is crazy. So. I just cut her some shade and then she unleashes these horrid of texts. I mean, it, it is crazy. It is crazy. The text. I mean, she's just like, you are gay. You're, you're, you're having sex with Daryl. I'm just like, what the kind of stuff? So I'm getting these texts like every day. I was like, Oh my God. So what I did, <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna act like a complete asshole to get rid of her, right? So I just said all kinds of crazy stuff. And at the part, it's like, you want me to just come up there and, 
and drill your little crazy ass again. Dot, dot, maybe. <laughs> I'm like, so I, I give her some crazy instructions like um, put on this red thing, have no pun to wear on, be in the middle of the garage with these red heels on. And I, I went up. So I go up to her place and on the whole time I'm thinking she's going to bail. She's going to cancel. Um, so I pull up and I'm outside and I text her. And nothing happens. So I'm getting ready to pull out. And then the door goes up. There she is in the middle of the garage. Her hands like this. And she's looking like this. And I'm like, I thought the sex was great the first time. Mm -mm. There is a truth that crazy women have the best sex. Because that was just like crazy. I mean, it was like. So I got this crazy girlfriend. We go to Hilton Head and th this is how the relationship went because I realized that she was crazy. And I said, how do I protect myself from crazy? So she can't meet my friends. We can't hang out. Only thing I can do is go smash. So I do that right for about a year and a half. Then she gets to this point where you're messing with other chicks. And I was like, yeah, I am. Well, we can't have sex anymore. Okay. Then I get the crazy text and I go over there and then she's like, you and your dirty dick. Let me check that dirty dick. Need to wash that dirty dick. Right. And then she was on her knees sucking it. I'm telling you. And then we got to the point where it just she realized that she wasn't going to be more. I didn't make any promises to her. And she just disappeared. Off into the night. <laughs> Leonardo <laughs> Really man <laughs> Really <laughs> Oh my god these comments <laughs> Oh and then that's the end of that Y'all are crazy. All right, Glendon After Dark. So wrap this up. For those of you who want Hustle Camp, now I'm try to get in tonight because I'm hearing that some people are having a problem with the links. So I will extend that, but tonight is kind of the official end before the price goes up because I'm adding a lot more value. So that could have turned into an episode of Snap. Uh, she was harmless. She was really harmless. Oh. I, but once again, I knew what I was dealing with. And see, this is one of the things that as men, a lot of times you don't know what you're dealing with. Because the first time she raised that I'm crazy flag, I said, that's a crazy flag. I did not disregard it. I didn't go, oh, she ain't crazy. I was like, she's crazy. So once again, she didn't know where I lived. She didn't meet my friends. And that's how it went for about a year and a half. <laughs> Oh, man, y'all are funny. So be sure to subscribe, and there will be more dating advice for entrepreneurs, a lot more. So y'all be good. Y'all have a good night. And uh, I am I'm out of here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, let's see. There we go. See you later.